Hi, I'm Michael Killen. If you own a home, this program will help you save money. And this program will also help you slow the, great, the growth of climate change, if that's something you care about. My guest is Alex Canera. He is a senior engineer. I'm going to ask him a series of questions, how we can save money by doing a few little things in our home. Alex, how are you today? Fine. Thanks very much, Michael, for having me here. Thank you for being here. And how can we save money by doing something to our homes? Well, there are very various things that you can do to save energy within a home. Uh, that would have obvious effects on your PG&E bill and so forth over, over time. But one of the biggest things that you can do uh, for yourself and for the rest of the world is to actually listen to Stephen Chu's statement about painting your roof white or some light color or choosing a light colored shingle or a light colored metal roof, that kind of thing. Okay. Well, good. So a lot of people have roofs, of course, and a lot of them are dark. And you're saying all you have to do is paint your roof and that'll save us money. If you have a roof that you can easily paint, uh, wood roof is a little bit of a problem because we're not really sure what the best uh, treatment to use on them is. But if you have an asphalt or composition roof or if you have a flat roof with gravel on it, you can certainly paint the shingles on the roof and you can certainly change the gravel to be a lighter color. All right, very quickly, the sun comes down and it hits a white roof. What happens? The visible light that we see with our eyes, uh, red through blue, is about half of the energy in the sunlight. The other half is infrared, which is heat. So you put your hand out in the sun, it feels warm. Uh, that's largely due to the infrared heating uh, from the sun. So what you, can, what you want to do is reflect away as much of the energy that's being delivered to the roof by the sun as possible. Okay. And you want to do it in such a way that you don't add any unnatural okay. colors to that energy. In other words, you don't want to take the visible colors and turn them into infrared heat and then re-radiate that back. We'll come back to the technology soon. So if I have a black roof, a brown roof, and I paint it white, how do I save money? Well, three, there are three things that are a benefit to you. First is, if your insulation under the roof is not good, uh, then, then you have an immediate cooling interior to the house that uh, saves you uh, air conditioning, money, and it makes you more comfortable, uh, even if you don't have air conditioning. Uh, the other thing that saves you money is that by reflecting as much of the sun's energy away from the roof as possible, you preserve the life of the roof. How, how much more would we preserve it? Well, the estimate is, and I, I don't, from my own experience, that is the reason I painted part of our roof 20 years ago, uh, because I didn't never want to put shingles up again. <laughs> so. At, if you look at that today, it looks pretty much as it did 20 years ago. Now, a typical sh uh, composite shingled roof, you replace every 20, 30 years, something like that, similar for a flat roof. And so you don't really want to have to do that uh, that often. If you reflect the energy from the sun away from it, then it lasts longer. Okay. Now, do people really care about more than 20 or 30 years? I mean. Do they stay in a house? And well, yes, if you, if you stay in a house a long time, then you'll reap a benefit of about $1,000 a year at least for doing this. And it might cost you $1,000 to paint the roof, but you'll be getting back after the second year f money that you would not have to put aside for buying a new roof later on. Okay. I think that if you look at it from the standpoint of somebody staying in their home, it's, that's, that's definitely a moneymaker. Uh, if you look at it from somebody who's not going to be in the home long, the comfort improvement and the air conditioning uh, improvement uh, helps a great deal to have them find benefit in doing the okay. same thing. So one benefit of painting your roof a light color is you can extend the life, maybe 10 years more 
I would, as far as I can tell, the, the statistics look like you could double the life of the roof. Okay, and you can reduce your energy, your air conditioning yes, cost. Yes, right. And, and that's one of the purposes of the white roof requirement for commercial structures in AB 32, for instance. Okay, and that's the state law, uh, yeah. climate solution law here. Is there a third benefit? Well, the, the third benefit is really uh, one for us all to benefit from, and that is the fact that by reflecting the visible part of the light that comes in from the sun, we don't add to global warming. Okay, I meant uh, money-wise, money. Oh, money-wise. Sorry. <laughs> money-wise, uh, I, I think the, the clear benefits are longevity of the roof and the, the fact that your interior is, is not being warmed. Uh, yeah. by the sun that much. So tell me, how much does an average household spend if they don't have insulation uh, between the living area and the roof? How much do they spend a year on air conditioning, do you think? Uh, my, I, my guess would be that it could easily uh, double the electric bill for, for a, uh, a month okay. in the summer. $300 is what people pay for electric? I don't know. It would, I think, would be at, at about at least that in a in a sunny climate, when you're doing uh, when you have a roof that's not insulated very well. So, if you spend a thousand dollars on paint, mm -hmm. then you recoup that thousand dollars in one year. Yes, easily in life, in in not having to replace a roof in the future. And the following year, maybe you save another thousand dollars. But air conditioning, just air conditioning. Yeah, just air conditioning. I again, you'd have to look at the the bill that somebody is paying a given kind of house and then see how much is going for the electricity to run the air conditioner. Probably the best way to do that would be to put one of those watt meter, uh, watt meters you can buy now and put it in series with the air conditioning unit or if it's a built-in air conditioner have somebody wire it in series and then you can actually measure directly how much is being expended. Okay, I'm concerned with the state of California, all right, and I'm going to ask the team to bring up a slide of one of the cities looking down at the roofs and maybe we can get a feel for tell us what you see here this is the city of Menlo Park California <laughs> yeah so what we see in the center of the picture are, are the Menlo Park buildings the city buildings uh, the library is to the left and there's a recreation center down uh, at the bottom center and then off to the right are some other buildings, SRI buildings, in fact. And you'll notice that the SRI, buildi SRI buildings have fairly light colored roofs, which reflect a great deal of the visible light uh, impinging on them from the sun. Whereas the Menlo Park city buildings themselves are very dark and they are composite shingled roofs. So those would be very good candidates for painting uh, with a, a suitable uh, paint, it's either white or uh, aluminized, something of that sort. So the taxpayers of Palo Alto would save money. Or Menlo Park. In this oh, case. Menlo Park, I'm <laughs> sorry. If uh, Menlo Park painted those roofs. Yeah. And, and, here, yeah. and here we have Palo Alto. Okay. Uh, and there you can see that uh, a lot of the buildings around the city hall are good, or they have fairly reflective roofs. There's one part of her, I think that's uh, where the police offices are, that's a bit darker, but uh, there are also buildings in the area that are residential that have dark roofs. Yeah. Now, I think that's City Hall, isn't it? In the middle, it should be. Yeah. And here we have San Jose. San Jose has a quite a good uh, setup as far as its roof uh, roofing is concerned. Now, those are newer buildings, uh, some of them, and so as a result, they may have fallen under state requirements that require re reflective roofing. Uh, basically, you can look at a roof of a house is about 1,200 square yards, and each square yard will be heated by the sun uh, at the rate of about 800 watts. So 800 watts is like a hairdryer. So you can imagine that every square yard of your dark roof has a hairdryer blowing on it. <laughs> oh, really? That's the way to look at actually what's happening in the sun when you have a dark roof. The light roofs reflect most of the visible energy away, and that doesn't heat the atmosphere. Okay. So these houses and buildings that have white roofs, which I think are now called cool yeah. roofs, yes. um, 
they reflect <clears throat> the heat and if there's insulation between the roof and the living area then uh, that's still good and has no effect really on the winter the, the cool right uh, the California standards for a building is if you if you have s the standard insulation that's required by the codes <coughs> above the living area then you will not even notice the roof uh, yeah. and so the the point of, of, of insulation is essentially to isolate yeah. <coughs> the living part of the house from uh, or building from the roof yeah. and the secondary purpose of painting uh, in the case of insulation uh, being present is to avoid adding energy to, for global warming in other words avoid exciting the greenhouse gases that are already in the atmosphere okay could you put Visalia up again for me? That was the last uh, slide. Let's see if we can get it up for a second. Or is it, okay, that's Visalia. And what do you see here? Well, there, they're, they're, they're pretty good too. Uh, there's quite a variety, but you notice that there's a large parking lot next to uh, the, the uh, city buildings. Uh, and parking lots are a problem too. I mean, it's not just the roofs that are absorbing. Dark roofs are not the only things that convert visible light to heat. Uh, parking lots do that as well. And so, in that case, you could do something like plant trees. All right. So, in, in all the cities that we've just looked at, and, and we don't need this slide anymore, um, it seems to me there is a smattering of dark roofs and white roofs. And in some areas, it's more mm -hmm. white roofs. And that's probably the sign of a more progressive area. Yeah, it would okay. depend upon how the building codes are implemented too, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. building codes are... Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but it seems to me wherever people have a parking lot in uh -huh. the city, they're all dark. Yes, and, and some people, I think Cupertino School District, District just announced that they're going to be doing a solar array over one of the parking lots in the district. Uh, and uh, quite, a, quite a large one. And uh, if you can't plant trees to shade a parking lot, then you can do something like that to at least gain some benefit from the sunlight that's falling on the parking lot and not turning so much of it into, into heat. Because the real problem is that unnatural heating of the atmosphere is created by human structures. And I think as we had talked earlier, the California Energy Commission and Lawrence Berkeley Labs have for years been explaining that the amount of heat coming from the roofs of existing structures around the world uh, is so much that it's the same as if it, it, has, it would have the effect of driving all vehicles in the world for about a decade. So one year. One so year would equal uh, replacing cars for 10 years. Well, the if, you, if you were able, the calculations from the Energy Commission and from Lawrence Berkeley are such that if you were simply to make the reflectivity of the structures that we've built around the world, and, and we've covered about 2, two to 3 percent of the world's land with structures, mm -hmm. human structures, if we actually increase the reflectivity of those structures by only 40 percent, uh, it doesn't have to be blazing white, yes. then it would be the same as if Nobody had driven any vehicle in the world, all 600 million vehicles at the time, for a decade. All right, let me take a shot at this, okay? Yeah. By painting the roofs and the parking lots and maybe some roads a lighter color, we are not necessarily going to reduce greenhouse ha gas emissions, okay? But what we're going to do is when the sun comes down, the energy is reflected back pretty, mu pretty much the way it came down in the same part of the electromagnetic spectrum. But that reflection does not agitate, excite the molecules which turn into heat. And, and we worry about heating the atmosphere today because Global warming is a threat. That's very true. Yeah. So very even true. though we do not reduce emissions, you're saying by painting the roads, the parking lots, the roofs, a lighter color, 
that you can slow the growth of climate warming. That's, that's essentially the basis for what Stephen Chu said uh, and, and what Lawrence Berkeley Labs and, and so forth have studied over the years. The key to remember is that what we see visible light from the sun in our eyes is only part of the energy. It's about half of the energy spectrum that comes from the sun. The other half is infrared and heat, heating. And we don't want to convert that visible light that we see into unnatural infrared okay. because trees don't do that, grass don't, doesn't do that, and so forth. So the natural areas that were here before man built structures were naturally reflecting or keeping things cooler. So if you now take a structure with a dark roof and it's large and it, it, it'll generate uh, many kilowatt hours during the day of heat and you really don't want to do that so you want to avoid that energy conversion. You want to paint the roof so it reflects the energy away. And what that does is buy you time. It says, OK, now the atmosphere, no matter how much greenhouse gas it has in it, now the atmosphere actually looks like it has less greenhouse gas because we're not taking this unnatural heat and repropagating it back up. OK, and you use the term buy time. And to a lot of us, we don't know what you mean. And we don't care about buying time. But when we think about it, the island countries, they're concerned. They'd like another two years or three years <laughs> to prepare. And then there are some coastal communities. And we have some in California and uh, Louisiana and other places. All these places would like more time to plan to try to mitigate the rising seas. Is, so is that related to your buy time? Yes, exactly. That, that, that goes right with what the Energy Commission said in terms of uh, increasing reflectivity 40 percent equaling 10 years of not driving vehicles. It means that you're effectively making the atmosphere look like it did not have those emissions from those 600 million vehicles over a decade. And, and, but you have to still reduce emissions. You can't it's a one-time thing, it's, it, and so you cannot continue driving or wasting or generating emissions uh, once you've done this. If you've painted every roof white, that's great, and it looks like we've moved back in time in, in terms of emissions, but we still have to reduce the future emissions. Sure. Now, you <coughs> presented some data about the world or the Earth, and if all the structures were painted, the roofs were painted light, it would be, it would allow us well, it, would, it would be as if we didn't drive cars for 10 years and we wouldn't be at having admitted so much mm -hmm. greenhouse gases. Is that right? Yes. It, it, the, whatever we've emitted already is there or decaying and, and, we're, and by reflecting energy that we would otherwise convert to infrared heat, uh, we avoid, avoid adding uh, that heating to the atmosphere. Okay. It's the heating added but not more greenhouse gases. Right. Okay. Right. So just looking at the state of California, would you make the same analogy? If all the structures in the state of California are painted next year, <laughs> the roofs, a light color, mm -hmm. equated to gasoline usage, equated to using mm -hmm. cars? Well, we have that little spreadsheet from the okay. Energy Commission that okay. gives you an idea. Could we bring up, uh, all right, that's, let's skip this one and let's go to the next one for a second, all right? And then maybe we'll come back to this slide in a minute. Okay, well. The next, next one after The next that. one. <laughs> Do we have the next, okay, here we go. What are so we looking at here? So this little chart just simply shows <coughs> what, the, uh, what I was mentioning before about the 40% increase in reflectivity, what its benefit is, and it corresponding to so many uh, tons of CO2 emissions. Now, most people don't know what a ton of CO2 emission is. It's 100 gallons of gasoline burned in your car. Say that again. So if you burn 100 gallons of gasoline in your car, you've emitted a ton of CO2. 100 gallons of gasoline. Is a ton of CO2 okay. in terms of what happens when you burn it. Now, could we go back to the last slide for a second, the balloons? Oh, okay, two slides back. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the idea is that people don't really quite understand what a ton means. I want to see the balloons. One more back, please. There we go. So this is uh, a picture of normal kids' balloons for a birthday party, and they've been blown up. <clears throat> and there's uh, maybe 20 or so balloons in the picture. Uh, that re represents, if, if they had been blown up with CO2, that's one-tenth of one pound of CO2 by those balloons. So a ton of CO2 corresponds to 220 balloons that a friend of mine and, and one of the environmental groups calculated as a, as a scientist. So 220 balloons is of that a, size filled is, with? Is a pound. Is a pound. So in order to get a ton, which is 2,000 pounds, you need 440,000 kids' balloons. Wow. And that's what you generate from 100 gallons of gasoline. That's a... Now we have an idea. I don't know how many, I don't know what 440,000 balloons looks like, but uh, that's a, that represents what 100 gallons of gasoline burned will do. And, un, and unfortunately, the world climate uh, predictions indicate that our model, the modeling indicates that by 2050, we have to be down to one ton of CO2 per capita worldwide. Because by that time, there'll be 9 billion people about. There's almost 7 billion now. 2050, there'll be 9 billion people. We're currently emitting over 24 billion tons of CO2 per year. So if you calculate what 9 billion people would be emitting in relation to what we're doing now, it would be clearly unsustainable. So the goal is to get down to one ton per capita uh, per year. All right. uh, for everything, that's not just vehicles, it's for heating, it's for electricity in the house, all that yeah. kind of thing. Well, I'd like to go back to my question. If all the houses in California mm -hmm. put reflective roofs on cool roofs, light colored roofs, how many, what would that be equivalent to years of us driving a car and emitting? Right. So emissions? each household in California, there may be less than 10 million households. And everybody has a car, pretty much. So it would be the same as if somebody had not driven their car for a couple of years or so, depending upon the mileage the car gets. So you can say, you can say that, just like the statistic for the world, that when you paint a roof to a reflective color, it's, it's as if you're moving back in time two years, perhaps, or more of not having driven your car. Okay, so for those people who are very environmentally conscious and have some understanding of the effects of increasing greenhouse gas emissions mm -hmm. and how they increase them by using their car, if they paint their roof white, then they in effect have not driven their car for two years, but we always have to look forward. Right. The next two years, they could be driving their car, right. and they would not, in effect, be harming or raising the temperature uh, as much as having driven their car two years. Did I get that one right? In a, in a sense, yes. They, they're, it's, it's sort of like a bank account, but, but again, the things that occur with the climate that make a change problematic uh, have to do with the difference in responses of different things like the ocean versus the air and so forth to the added energy from greenhouse gas emissions being absorbed. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, a, it's a bit more complicated than that. It doesn't give you a free pass to drive your car, in other words. We well, still have to I, drop our emissions. Sure. And, and the California requirement for AB32 is to get down to 1990 levels, which is, which is still above the one ton per person per year, and, and that, that is going to be a, a tough road to hoe, but it, it's going to have to be done. All right, and then for those people who do not necessarily believe in climate change mm -hmm. or cannot handle the abstraction, uh, if they want to do something to mitigate mm -hmm. the rising temperature, all they have to do is paint their roof as a starter. Yeah, and they'll save money on the life of the roof. And I just want to go over right. one point again with you, make sure I have this right. When we paint the roof, 
then the energy, a lot of it goes back basically in the same spectrum, mm -hmm. and it does not make the molecules in the atmosphere vibrate and create heat. Yeah, the greenhouse gas molecules, each one, whether it's carbon dioxide or water vapor and so forth, each of the different molecules that we call greenhouse gases are greenhouse gases because yeah. they respond to infrared energy and, and vibrate and start heating up the rest of the molecules in the okay. air. Okay, but if we don't do that, and we have a dark roof, mm -hmm. then the heat is absorbed, the heat the is The light created. is absorbed and becomes heat, yeah. And, and then it's reflected back, but it's reflected at a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Yes, as infrared. And the infrared is what makes the molecules vibrate. They love it. And so it's like <laughs> increasing the amount of greenhouse gases mm -hmm. up there. Yes. Yes, what you've done, 50% of the light coming in about is visible light. The rest is infrared. That's coming in. We can't do anything about that. The greenhouse gases absorb that. Uh, but if we then have a dark surface and it converts that visible light to heat, now it's going to re-radiate back as infrared, and a lot of that's going to get reabsorbed by the greenhouse gases. Uh -huh. So that's the unnatural part. The unnatural part is converting from visible to infrared and re-radiating that back. So it would be good for everyone to paint their roofs. Yeah, and, and they'll save money uh, if the roof is going to need replacing. Uh, and, and you can change the gravel on the roof, actually. We've done that in uh, our house, and some other people have done that. And just by changing the color of the gravel to a lighter color on a flat roof, you get tremendous improvement, okay. both inside and, of course, this generally beneficial environmental uh, so improvement. So would you like to see people do that? Yeah, sure. Would you like to see the California uh, <laughs> code folks change the building codes? Well, they've done it for commercial buildings that, and, and businesses. They should do it for residential. Okay. Hi. I'm Michael Killen. My guest was Alex Canera.